Welcome to the Outdoor Archives. This episode is going to be a little bit different than the others. I figure that the channel is about being outdoors, not just being in the woods or doing things of that nature, but generally being outdoors. So I had the pleasure of being invited to a relative's cottage up north, and I decided to take you with me. So I brought my camera gear, and we filmed some of our activities, and some of those things we did was, you know, snowmobiling in the outdoors. We also decided to play around with a Swedish torch, uh, rocket stoves, and things of that nature. So hopefully you'll get something from it and uh, enjoy the show. I remember the days of my youth, finding and fixing an old snowmobile and that sense of freedom that I felt when I was out on the trail. Well, today, Ontario has thousands of kilometers of established snow trails. And it's amazing, especially when the lakes have significant ice formation on them. You can go from lake to lake, town to town, and basically spend a week on the trail. And there is nothing like the exhilaration or freedom you get from pushing down on that gas and having that snowmobile just take off right from under you. So each of us took a few runs up and down the lake with each machine just to make sure everything was running smoothly. And after it was determined that things were good to go, we decided to go out, do some exploring, and find a place to fish. We cruised around the lake for a while, found a good spot to fish, so we set down our gear, poked a few holes in the ice, and started fishing. Now this is a lake trout lake that had been heavily fished in the 80s, and stocks of the lakers had declined pretty significantly to the point where very few were catching. Now, recently, the government has some stocking programs in place and has been stocking this lake with uh, lake trout, and we decided to try our luck and see how we would do. Now, we wouldn't have any luck on this day, but if you notice here, as I'm paying attention to the camera, I'm jigging up and I get a bite, and that would be the only bite of the day. And you'll see there's just a couple nibbles after, but I guess it suits me right for checking out the camera. Well, the fishing didn't cooperate, but you know what I say. A bad day outside is better than a good day inside. And this was by no means a bad day outside. Been a long time since I'd been on a snowmobile and felt the roar of the engine underneath me and just felt free like that on a big open lake, opening up that snowmobile, finding a spot to fish, and spending some quality time with some close family and friends. The fish weren't cooperating today, so we found a couple of other things to keep ourselves busy and entertained while we were waiting for that one to bite. It never did happen, though. We had to end the day going back to the cottage, and I assure you, we lived in the lap of luxury this day. We all liked to cook. We all took time and made quite a meal, a meal fit for a king, and had uh, basically the perfect end to the perfect day. Well, after a day spent on the lake and a good night's rest, we decided that it was time to get some work done. So we had talked and decided to build um, something that's called a Swedish candle or sometimes a, a Canadian candle or Swedish torch, all sorts of things. And basically what it involves is a stump like you see here cut into sections. We, we've got five cuts here, sorry, four cuts here. Uh, some people do it with three. But the idea is that you put some tinder in the middle you light it and then you start eventually you start putting um, wood in or wood on top and the coals fall down uh, into the uh, the pit there and this thing kind of shoots out like a candle and it, it did do that but let me tell you it took a lot of work I don't know if this wood wasn't quite as seasoned as we thought we found the best way was to kind of start a fire on the top like you see here uh, and let those those logs burn down. And eventually, we had quite an amazing torch. We wanted a project that was a little bit more practical, as not everybody's going to have a chainsaw available to them in the backcountry. So what we did is found a downed tree, and we cut it into 18-inch sections. It's about 4 to 5 inches thick, and we debarked the inner portions of these logs and then stuffed it full of birch bark and lit it on fire and as you can see here it started up right away um, we tended to this for about I don't know 15 or 20 minutes and then it was going by itself well enough to certainly boil a, a, a pan of water and uh, and even more and the only problem we did find was that 
you see the twine below ended up catching on fire and, and this ended up falling apart. But all in all, it was a successful project. So here's the rocket stove that we created by using a spade bit in the side and top of a log and then putting some tinder and small branches inside to create a fire. Again, this took a while to get going, but when it did get going, the coals inside were pretty fierce. And then adding small amounts of tinder or small little twigs would get that flame going really well. And yes, we were able to make some coffee on it and it worked well and yet another success. Well, there you have it. We've tried three kinds of stoves. This was certainly not a scientific test, but more something just to kind of get our hands dirty and get an appreciation for all three types of stoves. I don't think you can go wrong with either one. Uh, wood selection is important. Um, you don't want the wood to be too wet. It does take some time to get this thing going, but when it does go, you have a fire for hours and will boil plenty of water. So, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video.